Hello and welcome to the Capital Games Movie Club. I am The Wiz. Today I'm talking about the Italian 1963 film The Leopard, directed by Lucino Visconti and starring Burt Lancaster, Alien Delon, and Claudia Cardinale. This is going to be a weird review. Not because I'm going to do anything different. I, I got to be honest, I'm a little confused and a little conflicted as to my feelings of this film, but I'll... I'll just get down to the specifics in regards to the film, and maybe I will figure it out as the review goes along, or maybe we'll all just be confused together while we listen to me figure this out. We'll see what happens, okay? The Leopard is an Italian film that... It, it's really strange to think about this. It stars an American actor who does not speak Italian. It also stars a French actor who does not speak Italian and then of course stars an Italian woman who does that right there I thought was really interesting I didn't know that going in the only thing I knew of was Burt Lancaster and I thought it was really strange that, that uh, like I was going to watch this film and go oh he clearly is not comfortable with the, the Italian language and when I watched it I was really surprised that he actually, when I was watching it, I was like, wow, he actually does it really well. Well, it turns out that the whole thing was dubbed, but <laughs> at no point was I watching the film and going, oh, this is clearly dubbed. At no point have I, did I think that at all throughout the movie. Right, right now, what I'll get into is performances. Uh, the performances of the film are very good. Uh, highlights are, of course, Burt Lancaster as the patriarch of the movie. Uh, I think it was the, the Prince of Cel uh, Yeah, it's a Prince Don Fabrizio Salina is what he plays as. My God, that's a, that's a long name. And he plays the matriarch, uh, uh, the matriarch, the patriarch of a Sicilian family that is trying to weave its way through the sweeping social changes that are undermining their way of life during uh, a war that's going on in the 1860s, which is the unification of Italy. He plays the, the patriarch very well in this, and, and the patriarch is not uh, a bombastic kind of uh, character. It's a very uh, pragmatic one, very uh, one that uh, is meant to be pretty intelligent and also really well knowing of what's going on and kind of wistful about it kind of guilty to a certain extent too to know that when he is done it will probably mean the end of his family and the and the way that his life the life that he has for his family is going to be uh the way he lives he's, these are aristocrats these are people that are on the upper upper uh, class, the elites uh, that these that he is uh, basically a part of, and they live in lavish, beautiful homes. They have servants and everything. So this is definitely a story about an upper crust person dealing with social changes uh, throughout the entire movie. And Lancaster plays the character very well, though he is stern and he doesn't emote. A lot in the movie you do get a sense of the character and how he feels and what he is going through it, it really is a, an interesting performance by Burt Lancaster to play this character the, the way he does it with a lot of different actors they do tend to over dramatize to a certain extent because they want to put their stamp on that character to a certain to a certain point and Lancaster does that without going to the theatrics in this, which is, which is uh, very good in his performance. Alain Delon is the, the nephew uh, that is a war hero. Uh, the war hero is Tancredi, who uh, is very, I guess, very brash and very full of himself in, in this movie. He does a very good performance in, in this as well. Uh, not much really to say other than that. Uh, I think the the performance that I like the most out of this is Claudia Cardinale, who played Angelica in the movie. And this is one of these performances that the minute you see this actor, you're like, whoa, okay. 
one reason is because the, the first moment that you see this character, it, it's one of those it's one of those things you instantly understand why someone could fall in love with a person like that. And of course, me being straight, <laughs> that that kind of helps in, in that aspect, I guess. The way that she shot and the way she performs the character as well as she does, it is really well done. That makes you believe that this playboy like. A uh, young man would drop everything just to be with this one girl. It's highly believable because of the performance of Claudia Cardinal in, in this movie. So uh, that's a very good performance by her as well. The, 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 stat, the, the cast in this is really good, I would say, in the movie. The way the film looks, the set design, the way the film shot is exquisite. It is beautiful looking. Of course, because it's uh, based on a family that's on the upper crust. There is a lot of sets that are really good looking, really expensive looking, which really uh, highlights the power that these people have. And it's done real and it's shot incredibly well. Like it is watch a still from this movie. And I think you'd be very impressed with how everything looks especially towards the end with the the ball that happens in the movie yeah you will I, I, I it would be really hard for to be not be impressed with how this film is shot and how it looks like it is a gorgeous looking movie and not even just when you're inside these opulent houses when you're outside too in in the in the wilderness and, and in the dusty streets and when you're in the the poor houses and stuff like that, like it's gorgeous to look at. It, it is just the way it is shot. It is shot is really good, like really good looking movie to to watch in this. And the other thing that is uh, really well done in this, and I think I, I think is the biggest highlight of this movie is the score by Nino Rota. And my lord, is this the music in this movie excellent? Not only does it fit the theme and the feel of the movie quite well, but the, just the way that it flows and the way that it sounds throughout the entire film it just hits on a different level when you watch the movie. It is, God, like there are, and I'm not a classical movie guy, I, a classical movie guy, I'm not a classical music guy. I don't necessarily geek out over music, but when I do, it usually is pretty exceptional. But this also isn't really a surprise, since this is a guy who regularly collaborated with uh, Federico Fellini. He was in. He was the one who did the score to The Godfather. Uh, he's got a lot of different movies that he's been in that has proven that he is exceptional at the job that he's done. And this is just another one of those movies that it is just beautifully, exquisitely done. It is, oh God, like if you can, I wonder if you can go on YouTube right now and search Nino Rota and The Leopard and you can listen to some of the pieces. It is exquisite in this. I wish I knew that this was uh, the guy who did The Godfather too, but yeah, it's utterly gorgeous to listen to it is really really nice okay so i'm praising like all of the separate elements the way it's shot the way it's acted the music the the cinematography the sets i'm i'm praising all of it so here's where the weird part comes in with my review i am not sure how i feel about this movie as a whole as the story and everything i i can definitely say i like the movie i can definitely say that for certain but this is a hard movie for me to sit down and give a score on which is why i fucking hate review scores i always hate review scores but anyway watching this movie it, it does everything really well it, it really does it, from acting to directing to writing everything is just impeccable it's really well done i didn't get that feeling that I get when I know I've seen an amazing movie. I didn't get that feeling when I know I've seen something special or when I've seen something that is just a, a cut above the rest. Something that is just something 
I said, I, I've just seen one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life. Like, I, I, I did not get that feeling coming out of watching this movie, even though, like I said, the pieces towards it, the, the, the way the film looks, the music, those are impeccable and some of the best I have seen. I'm just not sure, even though those pieces are really well done, that if you put them together, it necessarily makes a whole that carries that same feeling that I would get from a movie that I would call exceptional, that I would call like amazing. All the superlatives that you can come up with that are is just a really good movie. I think the, the pieces of this film are really well done. It's just really hard. Like I've, I saw this on Monday. It is now Wednesday. I had a, I had a health issue Tuesday, which is why I did not record this uh, that day. Yeah, so I, I didn't record it right away, which I thought would have been good for me because then I can think about this movie more. It really, it really comes down to the rating I would give it. <laughs> to be completely honest, I could just throw a four star in here and be okay with it, but. That also wouldn't be fair to a certain extent, I think. The The story itself is interesting. You're definitely watching the political maneuverings and the way that the world works in regards to marriage and proper etiquette and stuff like that. That stuff's interest. That's interesting in its own way. I'm just not sure if all that stuff marries into... A cohesive whole it is oh man I I'm probably losing myself thinking thinking this through and probably confusing some of you when I'm saying that it's really hard for me to you know it might take more time and repeat viewings to figure this out which fine that that happens a movie that is considered one of my favorites of all time is a movie that I, I didn't I, w I thought was okay at first, which was Eat to Mama Tom Bien. When I first saw that, I thought, eh, okay, it's fine. It's a good movie. Nothing exceptional. But as time went on, it turned into one of my most favorite movies of all time. And something tells me The Leopard is going to be something along those lines, too. I'm watching the movie and enjoying the pieces of it. The, the, the parts of it that I can grasp that I can say that are of high quality and I can enjoy that stuff and recognize that it is impeccably done that way. Maybe it will just take time for me to watch this movie again or think about it deeper. I think I will just need time and more time, I guess, to really think about the film. And what it and what I get from it, and how it makes me feel, and and stuff like that. Like I'm not gonna sit here and say I don't know if I love it or hate it or not. No, I like the film. I do. I think it's a, a really good looking film. And again, the parts of it, the the music, the, the performances are really well done. I just don't know how I feel about the whole film. Yeah, that's kind of where I have to leave it which is strange. I guess right now, if I were to give it a review score, it would be four stars. It, it really, a four out of five, it really is a really well-made, high-quality film that is directed impeccably, especially when you put into consideration that the principal actors all speak different languages, and it still feels like that they are acting and performing like they understand what each other is saying. That takes a pretty gifted director to work that out to a certain extent. So uh, that is exceptional on that end. When I found that out, that's what made me more technically impressed with the movie. I'm just not sure if the emotional part of that of the movie is where I, I think it is, or maybe the, the thought provoking part, because not all movies need to be uh, emotional heavy hitters for them to be exceptional. I just am not sure where I go from here when it comes to this movie. So for now, I'm going to give it four stars. Maybe I'll come back to it another time. Other than that, yeah, this, <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry, guys. I, I'm giving it four stars out of five. I think it, with all the parts of it, it is exceptionally well made. 
I just don't know where I stand with a movie as a whole. Though I can say for with relative comfort and certainty that is an exceptionally well-made movie that I think if you are a lover of films uh, that you would have to see. And because the reason why I'm watching this is because it's on the Sight and Sound 100. I think it's tied for 90 with a bunch of other films. And I get it. Just the way that it's directed and the way it looks and everything is beautiful and looks really good. That being said, I just can't put my finger on exactly... I'm, I'm not sure about the film as a whole. So I guess take that with a grain of salt. I, I will say see the movie if you are interested and you're going through this thing like me when it comes to the Sight and Sound 100. I'd say definitely check it out. I don't know what to say. See the movie. It's, it is very good. I, I'm still conflicted about the film as a whole, though. So, yeah, great. I would say a, a very well-made movie. I'm just unsure otherwise about the film. So four stars for the leopard. So the next movie that I'm going to watch based off the Sight and Sound 100 is a movie I've been wanting to watch a long time. It's because I have seen a few of this director's films before and I have absolutely loved them. So I am looking forward to seeing another one. And now I've gotten a great excuse to watch it. I'm watching La Dolce Vita, the Federico Fellini film. Starring uh, Marcelo Marciani. He, I, I believe he plays a journalist in Italy at this time. Uh, this is streaming on Prime Video. So if you haven't seen it yet and you want to watch with me, now's a great time. And you can go ahead and check it out then. It's also in the Criterion Collection. I have the Essential Fellini collection, so I'm just going to bust out that disc and uh, watch it there. So I have it, so I'm ready to, to watch this one. So if uh, you want to join, you can. Otherwise, tune in next time where I talk about La Dolce Vita, the Federico Fellini film from 1960, starring Marcello Mastriani. I am The Wiz. Talk to you next time. <laughs>